education to the next. And we, that, I think that's a big problem as you try to grow. Uh, particularly in their case, you know, they were based in the San Francisco Bay Area, but they have locations in LA, which is six hours driving. Well, six to 10 hours driving, depending on the time of the day. And uh, or Chicago or other places that were extremely remote, while at the same time having very small, very small operations. And uh, you know, uh, uh, we had a panel earlier about co-working. Is co-working going the way of the, the hotel industry? Uh, and I think the answer is yes in terms of the size. I think it's the the answer is yes in terms of the different flavors that you have. But you have different brands in the hotel industry. At the same time, at least in America, I don't know about the Europe, uh, you don't have any independent operators in the hotel business <coughs> anymore. All the independent operators join a franchise because, because it's also a world where economies of scale matter. You know, scale of a brand. Uh, I believe the best Western people are independent operators, but they share the brand. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the online reservation system, which in the other industry is something pretty complex, and uh, we are going towards that level of complexity too in the co-working world. So um, I think it's extremely difficult already nowadays for a small single operator, co-working operator, to make it. The only way they can make it is because you have a passionate entrepreneur, founder, owner that is willing to work for minimum wage, really. Um, and uh, until uh, uh, you grow a portfolio, but the portfolio makes sense only to the extent you can share some of the infrastructure, you know, have leverage the brand, leverage the operations because, because you're close to each other and you can, if somebody is sick, you know, a staff member is sick, you can move somebody from, from a nearby location. That was not the case of, uh, of Nextpex. They were very uh, decentralized, uh, looking like a collection of business and not taking advantage of any uh, uh, leverage across the network. Whereas specific work prices is the opposite. We grew almost only with very close locations. The furthest location away is probably Reno, which is four hours away from our home base of the San Francisco. Uh, there's another one in Southern California, which is actually a bit further away. Uh, on the marketing side, Deck space was all about word of mouth. And in that, I include social media, right? Digital word, word, word of mouth. And whereas uh, Pacific Workplace <coughs> has a very strong uh, social media activity, uh, uh, the focus really is on SEO, on SEM, on a website that uh, you cannot miss if you do a search in, in our uh, markets. And a lot of it uh, comes from the benefit of uh, centralizing this kind of function for the portfolio, right? We've got one dedicated marketing <coughs> person that is an expert at that kind of stuff that does that work for 19 locations. So her uh, compensation is amortized on 19 locations. Um, so definitely a kind of scale on the marketing side. And what we saw as the low-hanging fruit as an expect hiring I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Pacific Workplace is acquiring Next Space. What is the virtual office business? Uh, Pacific Workplace is very strong with that. So, by virtual office, I mean uh, digital mail, uh, the ability for a user to establish a business address, a, a receipt mail, that kind of stuff. But also, phone answering services, we do answer the phone for uh, some of our members that uh, 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 desire so. And um, and meeting rooms, you know, the ability for visitors to come use our meeting room infrastructure. And out of a very small footprint, uh, we generate a tremendous amount of revenue, uh, like 30% uh, plus 5% of meeting room revenue, 335% of virtual office meeting rooms, whereas uh, Next Space uh, uh, generated only 6% of their revenue, and on top of it, it's a smaller. They are smaller locations, civic workplace locations, uh, about 15 to 20,000 square feet, so let's say 1,500 square meters, uh, which is twice the size 
at the next best location, and yet uh, a tremendous amount of the revenue comes from the actual office. Six percent is grossly insufficient. I don't know how it is in Europe, but all I can speak about is the, the U.S. because that's by far the most uh, profitable part of our business, and that's really what uh, helps found uh, co-working membership, which uh, in and on themselves are not that profitable, certainly not for next space. And, uh, and it's also something relatively easy to do because, um, because it doesn't take much infrastructure to do that. It just takes having you know, professional meeting rooms that are uh, designed to cater to visitors. And that's one of the problems of next space. We had a couple of main rooms, which was insufficient. We did an additional two meeting rooms per location, so we went from two to four, and some of them are just the offices, so they don't take too much space, like very small uh, meeting rooms. And they are now designed to receive people from the outside. And one of the, the fallacy, or one of the, uh, the myth, that a lot of co-working operators had in the US, not as much now, but in the last few years, was that virtual office is not our business because we all about community. Uh, well, virtual office is what enables you to form your community, uh, make a living, not to mention some profit, and also uh, they really don't distract from the community itself because you know if uh, they are a visitor that needs a meeting room to crash, they come in for their meeting. When their meeting is, uh, is, is over, they come out. They don't really distract from what's going on in your event space, in your, in your open space. And on top of it, uh, some of them will stop, join an event, and, and become a potential member. So, so it's also a way to seed, seed your membership, not to mention get uh, really good revenue out of that. So quite frankly, when they approached us, the co-founders were good friends, you know, we've known each other by going to uh, Events like Cork in Europe or you know the Global Workers Associ Association conference in uh, in Europe, we became good friends, and uh, you know they naturally came to us to say, hey, uh, "Would you like to acquire next space?" And as I said, we jumped on it right away for multiple reasons. But I would say the two main reasons are here: community culture, the fact that nobody, in my view. Nobody knew how to curate community better than Next Space. We wanted to bring this to Pacific workplaces. Because even though we come from the service party space, uh, we also tear down the walls. We are opening, you know, open space, venue space, uh, next to the nice business lounges that we have, such that there is a focal point of meeting for people. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the recipes of uh, good curation we're bringing that in from next day. So Pacific Workplace is going to benefit that way. And uh, uh, in the other direction, uh, you know, from a financial perspective, we saw it as a low-hanging fruit. We are already in the process of raising uh, virtual office revenue. It's not that complicated. And uh, and starting to make these locations, we took over more profitable. Only one was really profitable, Santa Cruz. Uh, the other two we acquired uh, were losing money, but they're already doing better than breaking even. And a lot of it is this happens slowly, you know, a couple of virtual offices uh, at a time. But uh, uh, also we generate economies of scale by having a shared infrastructure in the, back, in the background, whether it's on the marketing side or on the operational side, that really uh, helps us a lot. So, you know, the sum of all of it ended up with uh, a next space company that was financially very weak, even though, uh, you know, for the longest time, they would make the, uh, um, the headline uh, in the, the world of co-working. So uh, part of it, well, I'll get back to that later. Uh, whereas, you know, we've been very strong financially, and part of it has been a virtual office business, part of it has been uh, also, you know, just being very process driven and, and focusing a lot on um, leveraging economies of scale. Uh, and uh, part of it is being close to each other. Like uh, Next Phase is in Santa Cruz, it's only 30 miles away from a uh, closest center in Cupertino, right by Apple Computers. Um, 
Now, we were not new to co-working. We own Innerspace Palawat 2 in partnership with Jimmy Russo, who is the uh, executive director of uh, uh, the Global Workplace Association. Uh, uh, but uh, Innerspace was not totally integrated with uh, Pacific Workplaces where uh, Nextspace is. So what did, we, what did Nextspace do wrong? Okay, uh, Too geographically dis dispersed. As I mentioned, not able to take advantage of local or regional economies of scale. So if you anticipate to grow, my best advice to you, just grow in a location which is within the driving distance. Uh, and driving distance within commuting distance. Because if you need to drive the whole day to go to your other location, it doesn't really help that much. Um, they did not unplug uh, unproductive experiments soon enough. So one of their really exciting experiments was Next Kit, uh, which is you know the whole idea of living in a co-working place and what ne right next to it and in a how do you call it the daycare center, right? <coughs> Where you can go with your kids, drop the kid, work nearby, shed the kid once in a while. Uh, they were not the first one to do so. There were two or three other experiments in the San Francisco Bay Area. <coughs> going in the same direction, none of them worked. I could have seen myself in specific workplaces uh, trying to do the same thing because it looks like a really cool idea, uh, but, uh, but none of them worked. And the problem of Next Space is that they threw good money after bad money. You know, They were so passionate about the concept, they so desperately wanted to make it work that uh, they invested eight hundred thousand dollars. There's no way Pacific Workplaces would have done that. Maybe you got one hundred thousand dollars, and if you didn't, Jay, we would have pulled, pulled the plug. So be very careful of yourself. You know, when you're passionate about a great idea, that's by trying things that haven't been done before is how you really create value. But it's not going to work all the time, and be prepared to unplug. Uh, they like business process, uh, standards, part of it is because of the size of their operation, being very small and being remote from each other. Uh, they had you know, decent technology tools, but uh, some of them, uh, some of their providers are used uh, here, so I don't want to say anything too negative about it, but, but they did not leverage the technology, right? Uh, and that's very important, very important to it online meeting room reservation system that that uh, tied to your billing system and, and this kind of stuff that uh, 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 works very well and seamlessly uh, and also that you know how to leverage the technology. If you, if you have a manager left out on his own to figure it out, which is what happens in the next space, it makes it very, very hard. So what we saw is that they have technology tools, but they really did not use them uh, to their full capacity. Insufficient advantage of meeting rooms in the office. As I said, the focus was inward, was about the community. There were a couple of very informal meeting rooms designed for the community. The community loved it, but they missed the opportunity to, um, to market that and uh, monetize uh, that, that space. Uh, and they did not sell enough services beyond co working membership, such as virtual offices digital man type of services, which are very highly profitable uh, businesses. Are we selling cloud answering services from our case, from cloud, your sister company? Um, and they did not use channels very well. They did not use virtual office channels, such as uh, CloudVO. We're not the only one. In the US, there is a liquid space and <coughs> uh, Nobody has really has done much, but uh, uh, those channels are very significant to the health of specific workplaces. So as we integrated two companies as different as next spaces as, as, and specific workplaces, what were the challenges? Well, the first was uh, suspicions you know, from members and from the staff, which is normal every time you have a new company, you wonder who they are, and, and it's easy to uh, imagine the worst. Um, uh, we very quickly uh, made our community managers 
feet at ease because they were awesome and we were very much committed to them and still are. Uh, but the members, it's very interesting because people had image of what another company might be. And the communities were very, very strong. So the first reaction was, don't touch my community, right? Um, in fact, there's a community manager that repeated to me what a uh, member said, which is when she announced next place was going to be acquired by Pacific Workplaces. And the guy said, Pacific Workplaces? That sounds really boring. I hope they're not going to take away our Friday happy hour. <laughs> and the answer of usually is no. There's nothing like booze to certify a community. And, and uh, so we spend a lot of time with them and drinking with them. And, and they could see that uh, we can drink just as well as anybody else and, and have a good time. And, and that, that was important. But we very quickly overcome uh, this kind of, uh, of suspicion. Um, our community managers were free because they came from an environment they were very proud of, very proud of their community. Part of it was the charismatic leaders, you know, that were very inspiring in terms of being able to share their vision. But that was it, you know. Then how do I do this? How do I do bidding? How do I market my status? Uh, uh, what's the best way to go about events? We very often didn't have much support for that. And that's one of the areas Pacific Workplaces is very strong at. So we, we uh, got them excited pretty quickly. Uh, then the next challenge was, what's the value proposition of the portfolio? We've got two companies coming and two brands that speaks to something which is quite different. Open co-working community versus service space, highly professional and, and, and private. Is there any synergy in those brands, right? Uh, do we use one brand? Do we use two brands? Um, what kind of products? The products that were very successful at Pacific Workplaces, like the tool office, are they going to be successful in, uh, in next space? How about the technology environment? So these were the challenge. And I'm going to go through what we did. It's a process. We're just starting this process because we integrated next space only in June. But I'm pleased to report that so far, so really good. Um, it's actually working out uh, very well. Uh, so the first thing we did is we decided to keep the next space brand. Now we changed it slightly. You know, it's next space powered by Pacific workplaces at the very bottom in small, but it's there. And the whole uh, message is uh, we're not going to touch at the next space concept. We love the concept. We're just going to improve it, and we're going to improve it because. We have a solid brand behind. We have a solid uh, uh, infrastructure, very solid technology platform based on one systems and, and cloud uh, uh, and uh, uh, impact. And, uh, um, and we're going to leverage that to benefit next space. But a lot of it is in the background. It's not something that the current community members would see. If anything, we would grow their community. And a, grown, a community that grows, it's a healthy community. A community that doesn't grow, uh, it's not going to stay around very long. We decided to keep the next space website, even though we are focusing all of our marketing energy on the PacificWorkplace.com website. So now the next space location is their own page. And you know, it's a little bit of a challenge because. The concepts are so different, so how do we go about it? Why don't we just explain it with words, right, and pictures? That if you go to a next space location, it's a little bit different from most of the Pacific uh, workplace location, and it's different in this way, and vice, vice versa. Um, and, and the whole idea, the whole idea is that we realize that eventually those models will converge. As I said, Pacific Workplaces is often enough wars to have bigger community space. Uh, at the same time, we are building more offices, private offices at next space, more meeting rooms, without taking away from this wonderful, big, open, co-working 
uh, space where the community expresses itself. And, you know, in five years, it's not going to be that different between a Pacific workplace and a next space. Uh, things, will, uh, things will look much more alike than they will look differently, even though they look differently uh, today. So, so in five years, we'll probably have just one brand. I don't know if it's Pacific workplaces or next place or something else, because, you know, by then, we may grow even more. But uh, it makes sense to have one brand at some point of time. It did make sense to us to stop that process uh, uh, sort of gradually. <coughs> what else did we do? Oh, we, we brought uh, PAC, PAC, we refer to Pacific Work, this is this PAC. Uh, PAC training, support, and process to be. I don't want to underemphasize how important those processes are, how important our webinar library is where our new next space community managers that are integrating the, the PAC environment can, can go to figure out how to do things, you know, how to use the technology platform, uh, how to monitor their web page online, how to uh, uh, curate their YEP, their YEP page. Uh, and we switch everybody to